Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where AI meets innovation. Today we're back in the small ship build automated area, and I'm going to show you a unique micro combat drone that we've created that has most of the AI blocks attached to it. We're going to be using the move AI block, the basic AI block, the defensive AI block, and the combative AI block. I've already set up the projector in order to show you all the components as we're welding them. This is going to be an ion drive system. We have a few small cargo containers that will lead up to our gun and our small nuclear reactor. This also has a drone controller on it and an antenna, so you can remotely program it. Here's our Gatling cannon. Our ion drives on the top. Two batteries on the back. And let me just get these batteries. I'm purposely doing the AI blocks last so I can show you the rest of the setup beforehand. We have a camera on the front, a simple gyro on the front, your antenna is on the front, and a few conveyor blocks. I think we just have this one last battery, and then we can do the AI setup. This is your AI flight move. If you want to have your drone follow you around, you need the move function and the basic function together. On the other side, I put the defense combat and the offense combat controllers. It doesn't really matter where you put them on the ship, as long as the arrow is pointing in the right direction. Let me go ahead and turn off the ship build projector. Looks like we did weld all the components that were required. I'm going to turn off this ship build merge block and it should detach us from the holder. If you forget to turn it off, you won't be able to move your small ship back off the platform. Then we'll remote access. It should be the closest small grid to us. And we'll go ahead and rename this now. You can also probably see that the PCU use of this small AI ship is only 715, which is pretty good if you're limited to 100,000. I think Micro Warrior AI drone is what I called the last one. You just select control instead of just the terminal. And we should be able to move this fairly simple after we set up our G screen. I'm also adding the Gatling cannon here in case we want to manually or remotely control it. And that's about it. Let's give it a test spin, see if we can move or not. If you find yourself not being able to move it, then it might be an issue where your AI blocks are currently turned on. If the AI blocks are turned on, it will override your remote control access. I think, let's test it out. Yeah, I don't see it moving or anything. Let me put this uranium in here real quick. And back to, I think, the terminal, and we should be able to go through each one. Yep, the basic task is off. Defense is off. Move is on. See this red error here? If we don't have anything else like a basic task set up or recorded task, then you can't move. As long as all these ARs are off, though, we should be able to remote access and then control it again. So if you run into this issue, that might be the situation. Then go back to control, and we move perfectly fine. 
Of course, you don't have to move it all around in your small ship build area, but I like to have a little fun here and there. The camera's working pretty good. It's not exactly the center, but it's close enough because it's next to the Gatling gun that it gives you the right perspective. Okay, now that we have this done, I'm going to turn on the AI Basic and go through that process for you. Just remote access again, go to its terminal, and then the AI Basic task. This one also has an error because it says that there's no move block on because we turned it off earlier. So we've turned this block on. Make sure your AI behavior is on. And then your following distance, well, let's stop this first. Your following distance says three meters. I adjusted this earlier because it depends on what you're trying to follow. You have a follow home, follow player, or autopilot. Follow home, you can designate a specific spot. But for now, we'll just leave it as follow player, and I'll go over the rest later on. And then once you have the basic set up, then you can go to the AI flight move. Make sure to turn it on. Maybe I should show you how to set it up first before we turn it on. So the speed limit, I have it set to 50. But if you're in close quarters, you might only want to set it to 10. You can also, if you're in an atmosphere, set the minimum altitude, your pitch angle, and your roll angle. Those aren't really going to matter when you're in space, though. Then precision mode, because we're inside this small area. And then collision mode, also. We don't want it to run into our ship build welder. And there you have it. So if I move a little bit, it'll actually try to follow me and get real up close. Just like this. Three meters is pretty darn close to us. And with the precision mode on, it actually stops, turns, and then starts going again. Precision just means that it's going to stop before it goes to the next direction. All right. I think this space is a little bit too small to mess around too much. So I'm going to take this bugger outside. Just got to open these doors over here. I probably should have put an easy button for these doors or added to my sensor where the sensor doesn't actually trigger the ship build when I open them. I turn those off ahead of time though. As we come through here, we just have to make our way back through the top and it should follow us the entire time. If you go too fast when it's in precision mode and you make turns, it'll get lost. So you don't want that to happen and it's good to take your time to make sure it's right behind you. Once you're outside though, it's not going to matter as much. And up through here, just have to wait for it to come up behind us. There it is. It's a little bit slow making its fine adjustments. I think we're going to turn off this precision mode before we go out. That way there's no lag when we're trying to go through the doors. And it should follow right behind us like that. When you have the precision mode off though, it likes to go to angles instead of more of a direct line. So if you're worried about it hitting the sidewall or anything like that, it won't but it'll get stuck next to the door. I had that issue earlier. So I'm going to come over to the tiger shark here. If you haven't seen this model, it's actually on a short video. And there it is. You want to make sure that your distance is adjusted, though, once you go into another ship. Because you don't want it so close that it is right on top of your other ship. If you want it to follow you to keep enemies away, I would definitely move it out. And since this is a small ship, I'm going to just do about 20 meters. If it was a larger ship, say a space pod, you might want 50 to 100 meters. 
but as you can see, it definitely backs off of you immediately when you adjust it. As long as you're not inside the building, that is. If we get into the Tiger Shark, and essentially start moving around, it should easily follow us. It'll adjust accordingly as I turn the ship even. Now some of the other controls on here help you out as well. We put the defense combat and the offense combat. So for the defense combat, We'll just go ahead and turn this on. Make sure your AI behavior is on. And you can choose what it defends against or if it runs away. So we're going to just leave it at enemies, but you could do enemies and neutrals. It really depends on your empire strategy, who you want to take out. You can also target specific ships, so if you want it to attack something with weapons, propulsion, or any of the such, you can do that too. You want it to lock on the target, so it'll stay on the target, follow around, until basically it can't shoot it anymore. And then you have a flee option, where it just runs off basically to a designated position, so it doesn't get destroyed. But in this case, we don't care if this drone gets destroyed because it's pretty cheap and we can make about a hundred of them fairly quick. However, if you were going to flee, you can choose any of the locations that you have designated on your GPS for it to go to. And then you can specify how close that location will be. For this, we'll put 50 because if it, say, defaults back to your space pod, you don't want that to be that close or on top of the space pod. Turn the offensive combat on, AI behavior on, and again, for offensive, you can do enemies and neutrals. You can also target other characters if you're on a server. The target priority is the closest, largest, or smallest object that it detects. Your target search, now this part is important. If you set this too low, then you'll have an issue where it just kind of glitches out a bit because it is searching too fast and trying to get more than one target at a time. Then you can adjust again by whatever the threat may have on it. If you just say default, it basically goes to whatever is out there. The attack pattern is important too. If you check out the War Strategies video, you'll see the different circumstances you could be in, such as shock and awe. So you could either circle, stay at range, hit and run, and any of the four. Then the circular distance, I keep it about 500 because the Gatling can only shoot to about 800. If you have an assault, you could probably stay back farther. Then the facing mode is important. You can choose to either face with a stationary gun if it's on your front. That's what I have it at. And then choose that specific gun and add the weapon, or as you may have noticed, you can set it manually. So either the front of the ship, back of the ship, depending if you have a remote control, it'll be based off of the remote control's direction. And that's about it for those. We'll cruise around and I'll kind of show you at the space pod that it will just simply follow the space pod around if you're trying to flee back to a safe zone. Now these little drones are pretty handy, especially with the AI, because you can create an entire Arbata and have them all following you at one time. Instead of follow player, on the basic task, you just set to follow home. 
And then when you have follow home, you just have to select the GPS or the ship antenna that is available. So I could set it to this asteroid base if I wanted to, but I'm going to put it to the respawn pod instead. Because our asteroid base is in an asteroid, I don't want it to try to get to the center and have an issue running along the walls. Then again, the minimum range from the home, I'm going to set it that way it's not too close and it can still shoot off enemies if it wants without hitting the respawn pod. There's a minimum range and a maximum range. So your minimum range, if you want it to stay close, I would set it to 100 and your maximum range at say 101 and it's going to be right on top of it. In this case, I'll do 50-51 since this, the respawn ship is fairly small. And then we'll have it wander when idle. So it doesn't just sit in the same spot the entire time and become an easy target. As you can see, it just kind of zips around the area now. It's not too bad. You can move it closer if you want to. But like I said, I like to keep the distance. So if there's any enemies around, they'll target the drone instead of my respawn ship. And then if you want to turn the combat on, make sure it's on and the AI behavior. But you can only turn on the offense or defense. So if your defense is on now, your offense should be off. And I'd say leave the defense on if it's going to be around your respawn pod because you don't want it to run off and try to find an enemy or an enemy becomes slightly in range and then it runs off from your respawn pod and your respawn pod gets attacked. That wouldn't be any good. Well, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and please leave your tips and tricks in the comment section. I appreciate it.